This video is part of the completion of a verbal spoken pact I have with Pazuzu, the son of Hanbi. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about him and a couple of energy exercises you can do and practices that can get you going with it. The main source material, the information about Pazuzu, is uh, this book right here, Baron and Baronessa Aragni, Liber and Vernos and Vernar. I am Pazuzu, son of Hanbi, king of the evil wind spirits. I ascend the mighty mountain that quaked, and the evil winds I ran to there were headed west. One by one, I broke off their wings. Pazuzu is an ancient Sumerian, draconian deity. He is the son of Hanbi. I'm just going to read a couple of excerpts from here. The great and mighty ancient black god has left his mark throughout history. His road is paved with suffering, despair, fact or fiction. This is where the adept sorcerer needs to work through superstitious nonsense and bring cold hard truth to light. Over the years, due to false information, fictional works, and occult superstition, Pazuzu has gotten an extremely bad name. He is seen as a tyrant, a lesser being, even a demon. This could not be further from the truth. Pazuzu is no mere demon, but a god, and all variants thereof. His abilities form a triad, healing, protection, and destruction. He is also a magnificent teacher. What makes this infernal juggernaut a great ally is that he can remove any spiritual affliction and physical disease within a matter of days. We have worked with him on numerous occasions and have never been wanting with his swift acting grace. The author from the quotation above has made some interesting connections with the, this impressive force. However, some vital information was missing for the serious cultist. Lord Pazuzu is not a demon, for his spiritual vibrations is on the same energetic levels as Lucifer. Some have given him the attributes of the celestial or angelic forces. However, angelic beings are the most untrustworthy and egotistical creatures in the universe. You must understand, dear reader, that these beings are made popular through the writings of Dr. John Dee. He was a step away from worshipping these beings like groveling swine. In his writings, you can see clearly that he was spiritually obsessed and suppressed. Hence, no mistake should be made in associating the black god with a much lower level being as an angel. The word angel is derived from the word angelus, which means messenger. Any demonic force, especially those in the we western wind, from this nature to spread disease and plague is under the rule of the Lord Pazuzu. Fact. In the following paragraphs, we present you a historical proof of the ancient cultural beliefs concerning Pazuzu. The mighty wind devil of the Assyrian and Babylonian wastelands can be considered as one of the most malevolent elemental forces in the world of mythology. In his erudite book, The Domain of Devils, Eric Marple describes the wind demon as the most terrible of all demonic entities, having the power to spread loathsome disease with his fiery breath. The demon has for a head almost fleshless, like a skull of a dog, representing disease, and for the fleshless death's head, a desert scavenger, starvation. Significantly, William Wood states in his history of the devil, Mesopotamian, Mesopotamia, the horned demon Pazuzu, rode on the wind and carried Malaria, thus emphasizing the demon's destructive role as lord of fevers and plagues, perhaps relating Pazuzu to the devouring dragon, Typhon, angel of the fatal winds, equated with the disease typhoid. The idea of the wind devil as a desert creature may derive from the Egyptian concept of Set, the destroyer, the most ancient of gods who was represented as a strange dog-like animal, not unlike the scavenging denizen of the desert, the jackal. Kenneth Grant has called this manifestation of Set Shugal, the desert fox symbolic of Set, the male half of the B666, the number of Shugal being 333. The female half of the beast is Karangzong, 333, another pestilential being representing chaos and all of its latent and manifest aspects. Karanzong is said to have driven Aleister Crowley insane by his evocation of this entity in the North African desert, representing the malaise of chaos and destruction. 
I don't like to say its name for now, and I'm just going to call this thing C333, and I'm going to explain the difference when I'm done here. Um, C333 is said to have driven Crowley mad. Is most likely probably one of the most complex symbols in Western occultism. Interestingly, in relating Pazuzu, the concept of the beast, we find a number 107. Kenneth Grant states that this number is the number of the angel Leo Oval, a messenger of the beast. Oval literally means egg and therefore refers to the aeon of the daughter or the aeon of Set, which is still an embryonic form. In many of the world's ancient theologies, the final aeon is an era of destruction when the messenger of the beast, Pazuzu, delivers his word, a howl of pestilential desert wind. The ancient may have recognized this word as the dread great dragon, Atem, whose number is 440, it is also the number to alliant, to annihilate, cease and disappear, and significantly complete, which may refer to the ending of the cycle, as Atem is also the goddess of curiosity, identical to the terrible Hindu goddess Kali, the destroyer. It is also interesting to note that 107 plus 333 equals 440. The formula may represent the ultimate blast of devastating wind from the mouth of the great dragon Atem, the beast of the apocalypse. In relating these concepts, this ancient Middle Eastern demon of the southwest wind, we can understand why this symbol was regarded with such awe and terror as the most ruthlessly destructive demon of the pantheon of nefarious beings. The wind devil represents the destruction of human life itself, the demon of the southwest wind by Stefan Sennett. Okay, there's a lot to fucking break down in there, but um, I'm going to tell you straight up, uh, Pazuzu is not Karanzan, he is not C333. However, um, he is current, does go deep. He does go deep. While he is not a C33 entity, he can get as evil, he can get as malevolent, he can get pretty close to that if he wants to be, but he's also very benevolent and he's very protectorate. I'm going to show you. This is my Novena candle I made for Pazuzu. And by the way, a super, super easy hack, occult hack. Rather than paying, you know, lots of my, rather than paying $20, $30, or $50 for a demon Novena, you can go to any dollar store, a Dollar Tree. I buy these Catholic candles, these saint candles, for like a dollar. And I go on my computer... I print out whatever artwork I want to make for that particular candle. And you just get some clear packing tape and you just tape. You just tape the picture. You, you, you tape the print on top of on top of the, the candle. Now, now you do want to find a saint candle. You don't want to do this with a with a, a blank candle that does not have a plastic wrap on it. And, and here's why. Because when these completely burn out, you can take an X-Acto blade, you can slice down the middle, you can slice the back of it, and you can lift up the sleeve, and you can attach it to another candle. So you can keep the candle art, you can keep the candle sleeve, and transfer it from candle to candle to candle. And having that sleeve underneath makes it that much easier. If you just were to just tape it to just paper to pure glass you run the risk of actually tearing and damaging the art work on there. I, I tried, I've learned this the hard way. I tried to transfer images of deities to another candle, knowing unknowingly that the empty candle was a bare glass candle, and I almost tore up the image on accident. I almost destroyed the image. So that's just a fun fact for you. No, Pazuzu is a multifaceted being. He is a being of immense fucking power. He is on a similar frequency to Lucifer. He is on a similar frequency to the triple goddess Hecate. He is a very similar to Belial, though this vi video is not about Belial. It's about Pazuzu. Belial is still like a lot more powerful than Pazuzu, but this is not to squander or crush Pazuzu's power anyway. No, Pazuzu is a fucking powerhouse. He is a workhorse. He is very close to reality. Now, a lot of what we just read there from Stefan Sennett was um, 
was fear mongering and and stuff comes from Kenneth Grant and the Typhonian tradition there. Um, Pazuzu, again, he's not set, but he is he is one of those beings, okay, uh, one of those dog like beings. They're a half human, half dog, or half jackal. Um, I think the ancient Sumerians called them Ugalu or something. That that was one of the names that they gave to them. I actually have um I actually have Ugalu artwork on on my wall right here where near I sleep. This Diocletian flag right here near my bed. And that's that's what an Ugalu looks like. So Pazuzu, he is he is one of the he is one of those types of beings. He is an Ugalu, what we call it call an Ugalu, which is an ancient Sumerian demon, absolutely frightening, frightening stuff. Uh, they're they are the children of Tiamat, a uh, Tiamat. They are the children of uh, Kingu, Absu. They are the dwellers in the endless waters. They are in the dwellers below. We're talking like primal grid works of creation. Like we're talking about um, the void before the void. We're talking about the place so deep. It, it's it's an abyss below the abyss. Like it's the, the Ugalu are pretty fucking deep. Pretty fucking deep. And they terrified all of the cosmos. They're pretty fucking scary. Like all of like Enki and Marduk and and like the co the, 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 the pro cosmic gods. The gods who um, slayed the titans, who uh, betrayed um, Kingu, Abzu, and uh, Tiamat there to create the physical universe. Um, their entire being is apotropaic and against the Ugalu, against uh, these types of beings. Now, while Pazuzu, I don't have enough gnosis or experience yet to make this connection if his bloodline draws all the way back to uh, the Ugalu. Now that he is the son of Hambi, that bloodline never really went away. That that bloodline continued in, into the generation of the gods, the generation of the Anunnaki. According to the Joy of Satan Ministries, uh, Pazuzu is an extraterrestrial. He is an alien. Um, he just happens to be a demon with fur. Um, other occultists I've talked to, uh, I've called a uh, Pazuzu a griffin, or or a type of lion-like being who kills other demons and monsters. Um, but to me, to me, he is he is he is like my friend and my guard dog. I fucking love him. He is absolutely just so amazing and he has played a major part in my life in healing my own spiritual afflictions you know if it wasn't for pazuzu i would not be talking to you right now i'd be fucking dead um i'm not gonna go in too deep about this but there is a real life uh friend of mine who i was friends with for 10 years right and I just fucking find out in 2023 that he was cursing me, that he was casting really nasty black magic and death curses and all sorts of shit on me. Most of those, at least seven out of ten of those years that I've actually hung out with him, he's been actively casting against me. And it was, um, it was a shout out to my witch sister. There, I'm not going to say her name. You know who you are. Um, it was her and Billy L who revealed to me that this individual was cursing me. But what Pazuzu has to do with this, uh, my nightly devotional practice to Pazuzu is what speeded up and expedited my recovery. Okay, because this, he was cast some really nasty shit. He was fucking me up pretty good. All right, but Pazuzu, thanks to Pazuzu, I am still alive. And my recovery, my recovery has been very, very quick. Most people would be dead or in an insane asylum. Okay, and this, this individual is fucking bad. Is really, really dangerous. The fake friend, um, he had caused, according to his own words, he had made some 
fluffy bunny new age Wiccan girl completely wig out and take a dump on the streets on, on the sidewalk. So his magic is crude. It is abyssal and fucking nasty there. But luckily, none of that happened to me. I didn't strip off my clothes. I didn't completely go crazy. And I've never been institutionalized. Thanks to Zuzu, I've been protected from this toxic individual. And I've never, I've never had to go to a rubber room. And, and as my gratitude for that, as a film, and, and in return for his help, I have to share this with you. I am obligated to share a couple of exercises. Pazuzu is a very multifaceted being. He has a celestial, you could almost say a white lodge aspect to him. Um, this aspect, he appears as like a uh, Marcosia um, looking Goetia, like a white wolf with wings or like a silvery gray wolf with angel wings. That's one of his most benevolent manifestations. And then he also has like a red set-like manifestations. And he also has a black Pazuzu manifestation. And the black Pazuzu is the most dangerous and the most violent and aggressive and feral of them all. That, that, I think that's where the associations uh, with Pazuzu being C33 come from because he's not C33, but he can get on that level of malevolence if he wants to, if he chooses to. He has that capability within himself. And it was Aleister Crowley, not Stephen Sennett, that made, um, not Kenneth Grant, that made the associations with Pazuzu and C33. No, Pazuzu's fucking amazing. He is... He is fucking amazing. Um, my witch sister, who will remain anonymous right now because she has, she's dealing with her own things right now. Um, called Pazuzu a hot topic Mikael, or like a Malgoth archangel. So basically, think of like Archangel Mikael, or you know, like a powerful Seraphim, like a powerful celestial protector but wearing a werewolf mask and wearing, you know, like a werewolf costume. And that would be the White Lodge aspect of Pazuzu. That's, he's super chill and super friendly right now. This is the only aspect of Pazuzu that I work with. He does have Klepothian and Abyssal associations. He does rule over uh Abaddon or Titaeon, the fathomless pit of destruction, according to Whalen, um, or Ariman Azul, um, says that Pazuzu is like an Abaddon or Abaddon uh, type of entity, type of gatekeeper. Um, I don't fuck with that aspect. I don't. I don't work with that uh, one. That is very real and very powerful. But I, my favorite aspect of Pazuzu I work with, and the Pazuzu that I work with currently is the Celeste is Pazuzu. In his celestial apotropaic warding off evil, fighting off evil mode. Now, what's really interesting there is that the ancient Mesopotamians um, and Sumerians who uh, worshipped uh, Pazuzu, not slavishly, but you know, made offerings and kind of kept him around there, they would put a little Pazuzu figurine over the child's crib to protect them from crib death. And it wasn't the male Oogaloo demons. It wasn't the male Pazuzus that you had to worry about. No, 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 no. It was his wife, Lamash, too, that they were warding off. And Lamash, too, is even wilder, even crazier, and even more malevolent than Pazuzu in his black aspect. That's all I'm going to say about that for right now. Um, in a private call conversation with my witch sister, we both agreed that Pazuzu had the energy bank, or at least the one that we've met, at least the Pazuzu that we've met, 
has the power bank of at least four archangels. So stack Samael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Mikael together, and you're getting pretty close to where Pazuzu's baseline is. And that's not the limit to Pazuzu's power. That's just the lowest level. That's just his baseline when he's just, like, chilling out. The, I, I know for certain that he can be a lot more powerful than that if he, if he wants to and when he needs to be. That he has a much deeper wellspring that he draws upon. Um, when I asked Pazuzu if he had any uh, Goetia, Goetia associations, three Goetia spirits immediately came to my mind. The first one was Buer. The lion head with the five goat legs who looks like a uh, fidget spinner there. Um, Ose, the leopard man. And third, Marcosia, who is the winged wolf. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to claim that Pazuzu is those Galatia spirits. But you could say that he has powers like them. You could say that maybe these Goetia spirits are like his wings and are his appendage appendages. You know, just like I say, I'm not going to say that Pazuzu is Beliel, but maybe Pazuzu has something to do with the black alchemy of the scorpion god. Maybe he has something to do with the black alchemy of Belial himself when you have to transform yourself into a scorpion before you can enter in those hyperly chaotic transplapothic grid works of consciousness that is outlined in the Mark Allen Smith grimoires, especially uh, the Scorpion God book. Okay. My experience with him, he works fucking fast. He works incredibly fucking fast, like almost in real time. When I was on the phone with my witch sister and she was getting attacked by spirits, I lit this candle and I made a little blue torch. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. And I just said a short prayer. I just said a short prayer. I just said, you know, hey, Pazuzu, I ask that you cover uh, my friend with the four Holocaust winds. Cover up with your wings. Absolutely rip, tear, mutilate, holocaust, destroy all that afflicts this individual. Destroy her enemies. Destroy the spirits and demonic servitors that are tormenting her. I offer you now, Pazuzu, um, the spiders, the crabs, the squids, the drones, the lower astral parasites, the thought forms, the egregores, the lesser demonic servitors. All that lesser shit I offer now to you, Pazuzu. Feed upon her enemies. Feast upon this individual's enemies. Then stack your own life force onto your power bank and return to her the portion that was stolen from her. Immediately, within fucking seconds after saying that, saying those words over the fucking phone, she's like, I feel a lot clearer now. Like, I actually feel like I can breathe. No, I feel like a lot cleaning up. So that's the type of that's the type of uh, magic of Pazuzu. He is mercurial. He is fast. He fucking hits you like a Holocaust hammer, like a fucking freight train at a hundred miles an hour if you're on the receiving end. Okay, and Pazuzu is also a hunter. He loves to kill. He loves to destroy. I think of Pazuzu as like a mink or a rat dog. You know that you would bring into like a a rat infested building that has a rat, a huge rat problem that you can't seem to get rid of, uh, snap traps and poison, nothing's fucking worked. But you bring in, you bring in the rat killer, you bring the astral exterminator known as, known as Pazuzu, he fucking goes in and he stacks the bodies up. He stacks the bodies to the ceiling and beyond. Like he gets in there and he fucks things up. He is a, ferocious and feral motherfucker he loves to kill things he loves to kill lower astral shit he loves to destroy parasites it's just who he is he's like 
he's almost like a Doom Slayer type of character. I see Pazuzu as like as like a as like the Doom Slayer type of character. If you've ever played uh, the twenty sixteen uh, Doom, or if you ever played Doom Eternal, great games. Fucking, you you don't know what you're missing if you never played them. But if you have played Doom Eternal, you know what I'm talking about. Pazuzu goes fucking Doom Slayer on your enemies, and he glory kills the motherfuckers. He fucking rips off their fucking wings. He fucking snaps fucking necks off. He he rips off arms. He rips off tentacles, and then he beats the motherfucker over the head with their own tentacles. Like that's that's how ferocious and wild Pazuzu is. And he is a hell of a fucking protector. I love his fucking energy. He's amazing. Um, my old Facebook friend who I was friends with for a short amount of time, Nathan Turner, had this to say about Pazuzu. He associated a Pazuzu with sort of like a spiritual, um, not necessarily an archetype, but type of like an avatar, kind of like a suit of armor that like you could put on the Pazuzu suit and like fuck up your enemies, just absolutely go ape shit on your enemies. Um, and he agreed with my associations with at least the white aspect of Pazuzu with Hanuman. You know, in 2022, before anyone else put this out there, before Aragni, before anyone else put this out there, I was the first one to call Pazuzu the Hanuman of the Middle East. And I still stand by that. I still stand by that claim. Hanuman, the the ancient uh, monkey god who was, he was the only one to, uh, who was able to stand up against he who makes the cosmos whale, which is like a thousand headed uh, hydra dragon monster thing that that was so fucking bad, like, even the multiverses would, would fucking scream at it. Okay, enough said. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to actual energy practices and actual exercise. Um, and this artwork there, uh, link will be in the description, but if you want to just pause the video real quick and look it up right now, uh, you just type into Google or type into DeviantArt Pazuzu by Satanen. Satan N. But the links will be in the description there. Okay. I have three energy exercises you can benefit uh, from Pazuzu starting today. You can benefit immediately, immediately from. I'm going to give you an easy one, a hard one, and then another easy one. Okay. You ready? The first exercise is called, I, I call this, me and my witch sister call this the combing of the soul. So you know how we comb our hair, right? You know, like how we groom ourselves like this. Well, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your astral fingers. Now this requires, this requires some visualization on your half. This requires that you have some experience with astral body creation and manipulation of your astral body but if you haven't done that it's super easy but you can if you've never done it before the best way how I like to do it is I like to imagine my fingers becoming like I like to imagine my fingers becoming like uh, Ryuk's fingers from Death Note really great fucking anime really great fucking show it's not really an anime it's more of a crime thriller there Ryuk is the death god who, or, or the death guardian who presides over the death note, which is the little black magic booklet where you can write in people's names and they'll die. They'll like drop dead of like heart attacks and you can like write in the cause of death and they'll actually like get hit by a bus if you write that as the cause of death in there. Really great fucking show. It's, it's not really an anime, it's a crime drama, but uh, Ryuk there is the dark god who rules over um, Light Yagame's um, Death Note there. He looks like, uh, and he happens to look like Belial, by the way, but with hair. So 
imagine, picture yourself and just in your mind's eye, extend your fingers, okay? Give yourself those Ryuk fingers. Give yourself those Belial fingers. And okay, now you got those Belial fingers. You're going to take these claws and you're going to rake. You're going to rake all of your chakras and you're going to rake all that filth and just all that garbage and all that lower astral filth and just sludge and just all that perfidiousness out of your soul. You can chant runes while you do this. You can vibrate the names of your patrons. You can you can even say Christian prayers. You can say the Psalms while you're doing it. It doesn't really matter. I mean, there's a million fucking ways you can apply this. But uh, let me just give you an example. Let the high astral rays of Donas Dagamastastas cleanse my soul, removing all vanity, all perfidiousness, self-sabotage, and hidden agendas against my own soul's development to let it fall at the bottom of the soles of my hooves into the black sun below. Donas Dagamastastas is the Enotian word for hellfire, by the way. Donas Dagamastastas. Donas Dagamastastas. Donashtagamastastas. 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 And right now I'm becoming a being of blue fire. I'm imagining myself just covered with blue flames. I'm completely enwreathed with blue serpents, blue hellfire, blue flames, completely cleansing my soul. All my chakras are golden right now. They're all glowing like gold. I'm completely being of pure light now. Do it for, I don't know, three to five minutes, okay? If it's too intense for you, if it's too overwhelming, start low. Start with like 30 to 45 seconds. Start with one minute. And then the next day, do 90 seconds. And on the third day, do two minutes. And then on the fourth day, do two and a half minutes. Then on the fifth day, do three minutes, etc., etc., and try to, you know, work it up there for a good, like, three minutes there. Okay, super grounding, super awesome. The next thing I'm going to show you is the Holocaust wings, or the Holocaust winds of Pazuzu. And by Holocaust, I mean rough, devastating sandstorms, sandstorms, little tiny microscopic morning stars, maces, and hammers. Okay? I guess it has nothing to do with the Holocaust of World War II. That was a horrible thing. Um, absolutely horrible thing. Total crimes against humanity. Okay? That was a horrible thing. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Hitler was an asshole. The Nazis were assholes. Um, please don't take my video down, YouTube. Please don't delete this video. But the Holocaust wins of Pazuzu. This is how you perform the Holocaust wins. So, in order to do this, it requires that you have good experience with development of your astral body. If you have not, there are many exercises and resources out there that you can build an astral body. In witchcraft, traditional witchcraft, they call that a fetch. So, you're going to build yourself an astral body, or build your astral double, or build your fetch, or build your wear self, your dream body. Okay? And just don't go flimby floppy going from practice to practice there there just because you can't commit to something yes you know find something that works for you but once you get results stick with it stick with it okay it's just going to make your life easier so once you have some experience with building your astral body now i want you to imagine that you have wings okay Start with two angel wings sprouting out the sprouting out your back. Now, if it's easier, I imagine like energetic coils, like a spring inside my chest, and then whoo, they just unravel, they unfurl. There's my top pair of wings. I'm gonna try to sprout them right now. Okay, here's my top wings. Here come the bottom wings. Okay, okay, so you've got your four wings, okay? Now, now, meditate. Try to imagine yourself as Pazuzu. Try to look at your 
hand in your astral mind and try to turn it into like a bear paw or something or like a lion's paw if you can um if you have the ability to manipulate your mental vision there your 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 mental line of sight you can maybe extend your nose out a little bit and imagine that you have like a wolf muzzle or like a wolf snout like protruding out of your face there or maybe give yourself like a lion nose and maybe like ah bury your fangs and like imagine like lion's teeth or like wolf fangs or like a big boar tusk or something is just rah, rah. just bring your war face okay so you got the bear paws you got your war face now rah, like that Okay, now look down and try to see if you can turn your feet into eagle talons, if you can turn your feet into bird talons, okay? Now, you're going to stand up, you know, outstretch, and then you're going to mentally, without physical, you're going to take this, you're going to go, bigger. you're going to throw yourself forward, and you're going to beat those fucking wings, okay? Ah. <clears throat> Oh, you're going to flap those wings. Okay? And every time you flap those wings, you imagine fucking sandstorms just pushing outwards. So if you feel like you're getting attacked, you could say, Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck off and die. Fuck off and die. And just, uh, just push this big blast of energy. Okay? Now... Along you do this, you could also make it into like a cyclone. You can make it into like a big storm. You can make it into like a big fucking sandstorm where these winds are going. One winds is going like counterclockwise, and the other winds created by the left gust of the wing is going this way. There, and you got two intersecting sandstorms every fucking second. Where you're standing is completely peaceful. No, you are the eye of the storm. You are the nexus of the storm. It's completely peaceful. You're unharmed. But woe betide. Woe betide anyone who tries to penetrate your sandstorm. They will be fucking ripped to shreds. And they will be stacked. Their energy bank will be stacked onto Pazuzus and shared with you. Now, you have to ask for this, okay? Do this. Mentally ask Pazuzu. Say, Pazuzu, I ask you now. For your four holocaust winds, let me be the eye of your storm. Anyone who tries to penetrate my spiritual shielding, my spiritual barrier that I'm creating right now, let them be utterly ripped to shreds. Let them be gutted. Let them be pulverized. Let them be atomized. Let them be completely shredded. Stack the energy of their astral corpse. Suck the light from their bone fragments. Stack them onto our power bank that we may share in the power of our slain enemies. And there I just I just share with you a hidden vampiric aspect of Pazuzu feasting on the life force of our enemies. Not by sticking in little beta bitch twilight vampire fangs or that bullshit. No, 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 no. For any idiots dumb enough to hurl themselves at us. Oh, oh. You want to you want to break yourself against me and give me your fucking life and energy? Thank you. I'll fucking take it. Thanks for breaking yourself against me. So that that's that's the Holocaust wins. The third and final exercise is super is super easy. You this is the easiest out of all the three exercises I'm sharing with you today. You do not even have to visualize anything. Okay, it's super fucking simple. Super fucking simple. I'm going to take the Pazuzu candle again. Okay. Now you imagine, you imagine Pazuzu as a serpent. You imagine, you or you imagine a snake with Pazuzu's face on it. And just very gently just bring it around your head. And weave like a serpent, like a big protective boa constrictor is wrapping you in its celestial light. Wrap it around your left leg, like this. Wrap it around your right leg. Work your way back up. 
wrap it around all your arms. Wrap it around this other arm here. And that that's one rotation. That's one candle rotation. Counterclockwise. Let's do it the other way. Now that we have two opposing holocaust currents, serpentine Pazuzu currents running in both opposite directions and intersecting at all of our chakra points at all of our energy centers and our joints surrounding our limbs, surrounding our arms and legs, surrounding our crown, surrounding our neck, surrounding everything that is sensitive and needs protection. I like to wrap it around my waist like two times at least. Three is even better. And that's that. That's really all there is to it. That's really all there is to it. The last thing I'm going to show you today is offerings. This is the third and final portion of Pazuzu's video I'm going to share with you today. Um, offering bags. It's really important that you feed the spirits and gods that you work with. Spirits do not work for free. They do not work for free. They require payment, just like anything else. Me, uh, favoriting the celestial, favoring the white aspect of Pazuzu, at least the more celestial aspect of Pazuzu, I like to give him food. Um, Pazuzu likes a lot of different things there. Now, I do not give him blood. Um, yet, at least, um, according to Bal Cadmon in his Pazuzu book, he said that the only way you can work with Pazuzu, you had to get like a cup of blood. You have to get like a bucket of blood or something from the from the butcher shop. That might be true if you're working with like the red and black of Pazuzu. But if you're really beginning, you you probably shouldn't even approach that like that yet. You know, keep start with the white aspect of Pazuzu. You can give him raw eggs. Um, my witch sister says that he likes raw eggs. You don't even got to crack them, you know, just get like a bowl or something, and put the raw eggs in there. Um, I give him cookies. I give him all sorts of sweets and chocolates. Um, here's a paper bag. And that's the symbol for Pazuzu from Aragni's book, Liber and Vernos and Vernar. And this is, um, this is the idol, the image I have for Pazuzu. And here is my Oogaloo monster, who I based off my uh, Diocletian flag. And this is another symbol for Pazuzu right here. This aloe vera, when I was part of my recovery, I would take uh, baths, like salt baths, to ground stuff. And in the bathtub, I would rub some of that aloe vera on my solar plexus, which was under the most attack uh this right here this this is extremely important okay that is a copper flask you want a copper shot cup a copper bowl or just anything that can hold a liquid so what you do is you're gonna you want to preferably get ever clear okay i'm guilty of this myself there i've been doing with a lot of existential real world issues i haven't always been able to get to to get to like a liquor store where they sell that brand of alcohol, where they sell Elbow Clear. I've been cheaping out and using rubbing alcohol instead. But you pour in the alcohol and what you do is you light it. And what that's gonna do, that blue flame is gonna burn. It's gonna make a big torch. It's gonna make like a big pillar of fire. It's gonna come out of that. And what you wanna do, any prayers or requests, you're gonna write it down on paper and you're gonna burn it into the fire. But I haven't always done that. I've found out that you can talk to Pazuzu you can just talk to him, you know, like any other deity or any of the other patrons or saints, and he'll listen. But just go the extra mile and do the extra step. And also Pazuzu being Lord of the Southwest Winds, um, this altar, it happens to be in the southwestern corner, which would be the far left corner 
of my bedroom. So with that being said, I really hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Um, I gave you tons of things that you can you can prepare yourself and benefit from Pazuzu starting today. Hail Pazuzu, hail the deadly, fearsome, terroristical son of Hanbi.